Hallo zusammen. Herzlich willkommen. Hallo everyone and welcome to our webinar. My name is Michael Windel and I'm a technical trainer at Heidenhain and in today's webinar I'd like to present the new software version 17 of the TNC7. I've invited one of the product managers as a guest. Guten Tag zusammen, mein Name ist Martin Hi everybody, my name is Martin Dietz and I'm a product manager for the TNC7. I'm very pleased that I can present the highlights of the new software version 17 today together with Mike. On the one hand, we have the design improvements. Mike, I think we should start with one design improvement that I find very interesting. Our new dark mode. I noticed the dark mode right away the first time I got a TNC7 with software version 17 for testing. It makes operation much easier in low ambient lighting conditions and is thus very ergonomic. But we didn't just introduce the dark mode for the TNC7. Martin, in what other ways did we adapt the design? Right, we also improved the TNC7's user interface here and there. For example, we changed some things regarding the colors. We worked on the dialogues a bit, so that the user experience will be even better than it already was with software version 16 for the TNC7. But we did a lot more than just design optimization. For example, the editor operating mode is very important. There, we implemented a new function called NC Sequences, which we'll show you. You can very easily store short sequences of your NC programs for quicker programming in the future. And we've added powerful and innovative functions such as graphically measuring the workpiece to make the setup process much faster. Mike, I'd say it's time for the files operating mode, since there's also interesting things there. Here we also see some design changes. I'm looking at a preview of my 3D model which I can also view from various angles. And so I get an overview of what needs to be done next. What I really like a lot is the tool management in the tables operating mode, where the redesign improves readability. Here we also try to integrate more pictures and work with colors so that the machinist can see the information that he or she needs as quickly as possible. Exactly. One new feature of the tool table in the tables operating mode are preview pictures of the tools, making it much easier to find the correct tool. So, let's continue with programming. As Mike said, the new NC sequences function is quite exciting. Yes, I like this very much, especially while programming. I can now store NC sequences that I then call directly through insert NC function. But what are NC sequences? NC sequences are part of an NC program. For example, they can be the blocks needed to activate tilting of the working plane. They can also be entire function or technology packages, such as with optimized contour milling. There we have a combination of various cycles and tools, which I store as needed. And so in daily programming, I have a finished program much sooner. It's just as easy with technology data, such as for thread cutting. I just say, OK, I know exactly which tools and cycles I need to produce an M3 thread, and then I simply store the entire combination of cycles and tools as an NC sequence. This is very easy to do. I simply mark the section in the NC program, then I use the Create NC Sequence button. I just need to enter a name. That's good. And then Create. And that's how to create an NC Sequence, which of course can also be modified later. They're not hidden somewhere in the system. Instead, I can expand, correct, or modify these NC sequences at any time, depending on what the current process needs. Martin, what else is new in the editor or elsewhere on the user interface? 
One thing that's very useful and exciting is the new workspace called Documents. Its aim is to get you on your way to paperless manufacturing. All necessary documents, such as the workpiece drawing, Word files, Excel files, or image files, perhaps the clamping situation, can be opened in the new Documents workspace, right next to your editor operating mode. Simply copy and paste values directly to the NC program. Mike, let me show it quickly. I'll just close your various functions here, open the Documents workspace, and you see, here's already a PDF. By chance, it's the drawing to exactly this workpiece. It automatically adjusts its size to fit within the space available. And for example, here we mark a value in the PDF, copy it to the clipboard, and then we can paste it, for example, to the desired position in the NC program, and then work with the new value. So we're doing our part to support paperless manufacturing. Since we've already gotten this far with our NC program, we can look at the simulation. Martin, please make the workspace bigger and start the simulation. Exactly. So we see here the complete simulation with all tools is run through. The entire workpiece. And now I can check whether everything is right. I already entered the finished part in the program's header and can now compare the models. Here we see some red in the scale, meaning that too much material has been removed. I can use the measurements to find out the exact block for this machining operation. Aha! The drill holes. Too much material was removed. That's block 15. So if we take a look at it, there's my cycle call, a cycle, and up here, a tool. Okay, that's my mistake. Instead of an 8.5 bit, I inserted a bit with a diameter size 10. I'll simply use the table selection to correct that in my NC program and then start the simulation again from here. This machining operation now looks good. So we can move on to program run, where the workpiece will be machined. But one last step is missing before we can begin machining. Martin? Right, we have to set it up. Software version 16 was the first one for the TNC-7. There we integrated graphical measurement and setup of work holding equipment like vices. With version 17, we've gone one step further. A very important additional feature is graphical measurement of workpieces themselves. Here's a brief example of how that works. Mike is already on his way there. First into the manual, and then into the setup area. So here are lots of setup cycles. Until now it had been like this. Once I had set up the workpiece, I had to know what all I wanted to do with the workpiece. Maybe first compensate for a possible misalignment, and then align the coordinate system, then set a preset. The machinist had to know all this and do it step by step in the right sequence in order to ensure that the workpiece was actually measured correctly. The TNC-7 makes this much easier with the workpiece setup function. I simply activate it and then choose a 3D model. There's also a preview window here so that I can see whether the datum or zero point is there where I need it. So, then I take this workpiece and can start with the actual measurement process. First, it is virtually pushed into the vise. And we see that the touch probe has already reacted. It is literally waiting for my workpiece. Then I pre-position the touch probe here so that it's directly above the workpiece. And then I can already press NC Start to trigger probing at the first touch point. Then I position the touch probe to the second side and Martin can press NC Start to probe the workpiece again. This means that I don't need to worry about which probing function is programmed. 
and run in which sequence. Simply pre-position, pay attention to the green arrow and the workpiece's probe, and then we can do it again. Using the traffic lights at the left, we can see that almost all degrees of freedom have been determined. Now we just need the rotation. The last touch point, which I set here, captures the rotation, and on the left you see everything is green, a perfectly measured workpiece. So, the workpiece is now completely measured, and with correct active preset, I automatically save the values to the preset table. The workpiece is then also measured in place in the vise, meaning everything I need for collision monitoring is taken care of. Collision monitoring for all the machine elements, together with the vise and other equipment, as well as the material removal simulation for the workpiece. Now I can run and test the entire process. There's one more new thing in the setup area. In addition to what we've already shown you, we integrated one more special feature, a new type of probe contact. Well, two actually. The TNC-7 now also supports L and star styli with the corresponding probing cycles. Here's what it looks like in the editor. Mike, open it please. Exactly. Here we see the complete support for L and star styli. This means that they can be calibrated and be integrated into programs both for manual operation and also for automatic operating modes. This is very important for workpieces that can't be probed with normal styli. That's why these special types are now supported. So, I'd say that those are the most important new things in the TNC-7 software version 17. Of course, there are some small things under the hood and also on the user interface that we haven't shown you. The best way to learn about them is by working with the TNC-7. The TNC-7 programming station will soon be available for downloading from the Heidenhain website. Naturally, you'll find a summary of all this there as well. All of the information about the TNC-7 is clearly structured and ready for you to read or watch as you please. I'll briefly sum up what we showed you today. Software version 17 of the TNC-7 includes some design changes, including the dark mode possibility. You see it right here for adapting the TNC-7 to low lighting conditions. Innovative new functions are available in the editor, such as the NC sequences function for reusing frequently needed functions. And third, exciting new possibilities for graphical measurement and setup at the machine. With DCM V2, we introduced graphical setup of work holding equipment. And in software version 17, we added graphical measurement of workpieces. All right, Martin, thank you very much for your time and participating in this webinar. Please get in touch with us if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention. You'll see me at the next webinar. I'm Michael Windel, signing off.